Challenge TV. Afternoon entertainment on Challenge TV at 2 o'clock. It's Trivial Pursuit with Tony Slattery. At 2.30, test your wits with trash wits. Thank you so much for a canny audience. Thank you for coming along. 3 o'clock, it's... Um, um, give us a clue, Parky. 3.30, don't drink the water. It's time now to travel around the world. 4 o'clock, simply irresistible. Time for Bruce to find his perfect sailor. 4.30, oh. it starts. And that's all coming up this afternoon on Challenge TV. Welcome to Trivial Pursuit. I was just thinking the other day about the trivial things we say without really thinking about them and, and whether they're meaningless or not. For instance, the phrase, my eyes aren't what they used to be. What did they used to be? Sup supermarket trolleys, I don't know, and things like, it's no good crying over spilt milk. When was the last time you cried because you spilt milk? Oh, no, I spilt some milk. <laughs> and the other one, this is one I've never understood. One in the hand is worth two in Kate Bush. What does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, with that bit of trivia, let's straight away meet today's three contestants who are competing for the chance to win a great holiday. Firstly, we say hello to Ranald. Hello. Hello, Ranald. Hey, that is spelled you? correctly, isn't it? That is correct. Oh, well, what's, what's the sort of the background of that name? Well, it's the Scots for Ronald. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty Gallic, straightforward. It's Gallic, actually. A Gallic, Gallic absolutely. Yes. It says here, yes. you are a retired rubber planter. That's correct. Goodness, that sounds exotic. Well, it can be at, at times, but other times not. I'll bet. Uh, just sheer hard work. Uh, where, are, are there rubber plantations in this country? No, this was in Malaysia. In Malaysia? Malaysia. How long were you there? 32 years. Goodness. So did you, did you have a very kind of impressive uh, plantation house? Uh, sometimes, yes. Sometimes not. Uh, I, I have actually Why, did it keep burning down? No. <laughs> I've lived in a shack before now. Excellent. Well, it's lovely to have you here, Ronald, and welcome to you. you. Next, uh, we say hello to Pete. Hi, Tony. Hi, uh, how are you doing? All right, thank Good. you. Good. It says you're a keen photographer. Yes. Is that something you'd like to follow up as a profession? I wouldn't mind if someone would like to offer me a job. All right, well, I'm sure you can advertise, <laughs> advertise your wares. I am here. <laughs> right. Yes, that's not such a good piece of advertising. <laughs> Hello, I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. I'd get a marketing director on here. <laughs> uh, what sort of stuff do you uh, like photographing most? Mostly uh, concert photography. Concert photography? Mm. Well, what's that? Different bands, rock rock groups, etc. Oh, excellent. That is quite specialised, isn't mm. it? Yeah, do, yeah. Do you always have to get a high position for that? No, 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 low position. Oh, is it? Why? Oh, yes, yeah. Always in the, uh, in the pit, in the orchestra pit. Good Lord, so, but then you just see up their nostrils, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's the sort of shots these magazines want. <laughs> what, bogey shots? Hello, and that, they want these bogey shots, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll move on. This is rather distasteful. Welcome to you anyway, Pete. And finally, we say hello to Christopher. Good evening. Yes, a bit of a time delay there, wasn't Sorry. it? Sorry. Hello. Long Good way. evening. Yes, it is a long way. It says you're a draftsman. Yeah. Uh, could you explain to me the uh, difference between a draftsman and a graphic designer? No. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> and it says you build model aircraft. Uh, occasionally, yeah. Occasionally. Yeah. Well, right. Uh, <laughs> no, thanks very much, Christopher. Welcome to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the contestants. Okay, let's get straight on with the game, the aim of which is simple, to be the first person to illuminate all 12 sections of your individual pie. This you do by answering correctly, we hope, questions on trivia in various categories. Answer correctly, a section will light up. Answer incorrectly or pass, then I'll just throw it open to the other two so they can buzz in after the time out bell has gone. Let's get straight on with the first round. Best of luck to all three of you. And here, the categories are the classic Trivial Pursuit categories of geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, and sport and leisure. Ronald, we start with you, sir. Geography, please. Geography. Yes, for a well-travelled man, I think. Let's see. Akureyri is the second largest urban centre in which country? Tokyo. Japan. It's, it's not, no. Pete. Peking. It's not. I'm sorry, I'll probably put you off with a very fake oriental accent, which is hard luck because it's Iceland is the answer. <laughs> but who, can, <laughs> who can do an Icelandic accent? How would you say it? A good No, see? Stupid. I could be the chef from the Muppets. Pete, 
carry on. Entertainment, please. Entertainment. Let's hope there are no accents involved here. Sorry about that. Bit of a red herring, Ronald. Hope you won't beat me up afterwards. Or indeed, tie me up in rubber. Because <laughs> a lot of people pay a lot of money for that. Right, here we go, Pete. Which jazz pianist sang Ain't Misbehaving in the 1943 film Stormy Weather? Oscar Peterson? Not Oscar Peterson, no. Anyone else? Christopher? Count Basie? It's not, no. It's Fats Waller is the answer to that. Christopher, over to you. Christopher, over to you. <laughs> sorry. Um, that's all right. Are you having a problem just yes, hearing me? Yes, or is sorry, it, are sorry. you just being a bit coy and shy? No, no. I'm, I might answer you, I might not. See how we feel. <laughs> entertainment, please, Tony. Entertainment. The thing is, entertainment's gone, so you can't have that. I do apologise. That's all right. Art and literature. Art and literature. Finally. <laughs> Well, the, it has, well. No, it hasn't, it hasn't. You can have this. Here we go. Which composer was born in Leipzig, Germany, in 1813? Time out. Anyone else? Pete. Mozart. It's not Mozart, no. Ranald. Bach. It, no, it was Richard Wagner, in fact, was the answer. OK, Ranald, back to you. Three to choose from. Sport and leisure. Sport and leisure. Here we go. For Orange, Ranald. At which resort in the USA were the Winter Olympics held in 1932 and 1980? Uh, Time out. Anyone else? Pete. Lake Placid. Lake Placid is correct. Yes, you get an orange section. Um, Your history. question proper. History for you, Pete. OK, for yellow. Of which country was General Metaxas the dictator from 1936 to 1941 until the German invasion? Yugoslavia? No. Time out. Anyone else? Christopher. Romania. It's not Romania, no, Christopher. Ronald. Yugoslavia? No, it's Greece, in fact. Did someone say Yugoslavia? Yes, I did. Oh, he said <laughs> Yugoslavia, Ronald. Still, it's worth having a second guess at it, just in case I change my mind. You never know. Yes, you're right, I've decided. Christopher, you are left with science and nature for green. Here we go, sir. Are you... <laughs> Here we go, here's another one, here's another one. Ayurvedic... That could be Welsh, but it's not. Ayurvedic medicine is the traditional system of medicine in which country? Japan. Ayurvedic. Say again, please. Japan. No, not Japan. Thanks uh, for thinking it was Japanese accent, though. Pete. Iceland. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Pete. No. no. <laughs> Very well done. It's not Ranald. Korea. No, you were nearest. It's India. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. So it's welcome to the wacky world of very, very implausible accents. Let's reset the board to redress the balance of advantage in the order of play. We're going to start with you, Christopher. Any, any, any category you like. <laughs> History, please. History. History we go for, which is yellow. In the, in the 1980s, there were repeated strikes at the Lenin shipyard in which Polish port? Gdansk. Gdansk is correct. Christopher's off his back. Hey. Well done. The yellow section. Pete. Um, entertainment. Entertainment. For pink. In which detective series that began on TV in October 1960 could you regularly see Neville Jason as Sergeant Lapointe and Ewan Solon as Lucas? Maygrave. Maygrave is correct, yes, for a pink section. <laughs> Ranald, over to you. Geography again. Geography please. again, Ranald. Here we go. What large Mexican state shares its northern border with Texas and New Mexico? Tijuana. It's not Tijuana. Good guess. It's Chihuahua, in fact, is the answer to that. I'm not making it up, ladies and gentlemen. All these have been checked. Chihuahua is the answer. Let's see the scores at the end of that first round. Yet to score is Ranald. In second place, with one section illuminated, is Chris. But leading by just one with two is Pete. Well done, Pete. <laughs> Right, now we come on to our film and television round, in which the categories are personalities, titles, classics, portrayals, drama and wild card. We also get to see some interesting archive footage and some stills in this. And also, some of these questions have hidden bonus aspects, which I will explain as they crop up. Ranald, we again will start with you. Please choose. Personalities. Personalities for Blue Ranald. Here we go. Please take a look at this. For Daley Thompson, the hero's homecoming was more like a pop star's. After battling through a scrum of newsmen, fans and well-wishers, the superstar treatment was waiting. Right, that's 1984, Daley Thompson returning from the LA Olympics there. Here's the question, Ronald. Daley Thompson won his second Olympic gold medal in Los Angeles. In 1984, at which venue did he win his first in 1980? Moscow. Moscow is correct, yes. Well done, you're off your duck. You're well done for answering that, especially as the question didn't quite make sense. I said in 1984, at which venue did he win his first in 1980? 
Still, you didn't notice, and I've made rather a fool of myself by pointing it out, actually, but I don't care. It's better to be honest about these things. Pete's, uh, over titles, to you. Titles, titles for you, for pink. Yes, here we go. This will give you a pink slice, Pete. Please, take a look at this picture. Right, that's a still from the film Crocodile Dundee there. Here's the question. Which country released its tourism? I'm sorry, which country increased its tourism after the release of Crocodile Dundee? Australia. Of course it was Australia. You get a pink slice. Christopher, over to you. Classic, please. Classics. Classics for yellow. Well done. Lucky choice, because that's a bonus question, which means it's in two parts, Christopher. Get the first part correct, you get that slice illuminated. Get the second part correct, and you can take away a section from either Ranald or Pete. Here we go. Please take a look at this. And great among the great, surely must rank George Bernard Shaw. The cap fits none other more aptly, as much for his great humanity as for the brilliance of his mind. Here we go, 1950, George Bernard Shaw at the ripe old age of 94 there. Here's the question. Complete the title of the George Bernard Shaw play. Arms and the... Lady. No, not Arms and the Lady, no. You were close. It was, in fact, Arms and the Man, of course. So I can't... Uh, <laughs> maybe you're thinking of another play. Sounds a bit more saucy, Arms and the Lady, actually. But I can't hand over the second part of that bonus. OK, that means we go back now to Reynolds. Classics. Classics is gone. You can have portrayals or drama or wild card, Reynolds. Uh, drama. Drama. Drama for Green. Here we go. Who won an Oscar for her role as actor James Kahn's number one fan in the film Misery? Time out. Anyone else? Pete. Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates is correct. You pick up a green section and you've got two to choose from now, Pete. Uh, wild card, please. Wild card. <laughs> right, so, lucky choice. It's a bonus question. Same rules apply, Pete. Please take a look at this. The National Sporting Club honoured the stolen trophy finders David Corbett and Pickles. Henry Cooper uncovered a special treat for Pickles, but it's turkey or nothing these days. It's turkey or nothing these days. 1966 and Pickles the dog. Here's the question. Which British boxer later defeated Henry Cooper and went on to fight Muhammad Ali twice? Which you'd mean? It's not. No. Time out. Christopher. Joe Buckner. Joe Buckner is correct. Well done. You picked up an orange section and you also get the second part of the question. Which heavyweight world champion, the youngest ever, defeated Frank Bruno and was later sent to jail? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is correct. So now you can take away a section from either Ranald or Pete. Um, I'll take one away from Pete. And which colour would you like taken away? Uh, the pink. One of pinks. One of Pete's pinks goes missing with a whoosh. And finally, Christopher. You are left with portrayals for Red. Here we go. Which Coronation Street character was dubbed the Nanny from Hell? Time out. The answer is Carmel Finnan. Carmel Finnan is the answer to that. OK, let's see the scores at the end of that round. In third place with one section is Ronald. Ranald, rather. In second place with two is Chris. But leading with three is Pete. Well done, Pete. <laughs> OK, now we come on to our trivia tactics round. This is where you have to nominate for an opponent the category in which you think that they might have slightly more difficulty in answering. So in that sense, you're putting them on the spot. The categories are world of places, world of music, world of people, world of fantasy, world of science and world of leisure. Ranald, we'll start with you. Please nominate for Pete. World of music. World of music. Let's see if that hunch is correct. Are you a musical chap, Pete? We'll find out in a minute. We will. We will. <laughs> you cheeky thing. Well, you must be, you take photos of bands, don't you? I know. Yeah, Do you I'm like their music? Coy, you see. Will you? What's your favourite band? Oh, I've got many. Have you? I've got many, yes. R.E.M. R.E.M., that'll do. OK. Uh, right, here's the question. The son of a composer, his LPs include the 1982 concerts in China. Who is he? Jean-Michel Jarre. Jean-Michel Jarre is correct. You get a pink slice. Pete, nominate for Christopher. Um, World of Places. World of Places for Christopher. Here we go. Which currency is used in Ajaccio, capital of Corsica? Frank. I'll give you that. French francs, yes. Well done, my appalling accent. Ajaccio. No, it's not too bad. I said that reasonably well, didn't I? Thanks for that photo confidence, Chris. Uh, Christopher, right. please nominate for Ranald. Uh, world of Fantasy. World of Fantasy for Ranald. This is for Red Ranald. Which classic Disney film was the first feature-length cartoon? Fantasia. It's not Fantasia. No, good guess. Time out. Please press again. Christopher. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Well done. You picked up a red section. OK, let's go round again. Ranald, please nominate for Pete. World of Leisure. World of Leisure. World of Leisure. To complete your orange slice, Pete. Which Jewish holiday is known as the Festival of Lights? 
Time out. Anyone else? Christopher. Hanukkah? Hanukkah is correct. Yes, you're doing very well here. You've got an orange slice. Well done. <laughs> Pete, please nominate for Christopher. World of Science. World of Science for Green Christopher. A young American teamed up with a British scientist named Francis Crick to discover the structure of the DNA molecule for which they won the Nobel Prize. Who was that American? No idea. No? Time out. Anyone? It's James D. Watson, Watson and Crick, the DNA people. And finally, Christopher, please nominate for Reynolds. World of Fantasy again. World of Fantasy again for Reynolds. Which elephant character first appeared in the books of Jean de Brunoff in France in 1931? Dumbo. It's not Dumbo, no. Time out. Oh, a frenzy of buzzing. Pete. Barbar. Barbar the elephant. That's right. You pick up a red section. Right. Let's see. At the halfway stage, we see that Chris and Peter are the joint leaders, but anything could happen in the second half. Let's see how the game develops after we take this short break. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's have a quick recap on the scores. We see in third position with 11 sections to illuminate is Reynold. But in joint first, both with seven sections to go, are Pete and Christopher. Well done. <laughs> OK, let's now complete our trivia tactics round. That means going back to you, Reynold, ag and again, please nominate for Pete. World of Music again. Well, World of, world of Music is pink and he's filled up his pink slice. So anything else, in fact? Um, world of Places. World of Places for Blue Pete. When the People's Republic of China was admitted to the United Nations, which country was forced to withdraw? China. Anyone else? Ranald. Taiwan. Taiwan is correct. You picked up a blue section. Well done. <laughs> Pete, please nominate for Christopher. World of Science. World of Science for Green Christopher. The engine of the short-lived Sinclair C5 electric car was made by which washing machine manufacturer? Hoover? Hoover is correct, yes. That's right. Weird but true, I think, there. Christopher, please nominate for Reynolds. Uh, World of Music. Please. World of Music for Reynolds, for Pink, sir. Born Declan McManus, his hits include Oliver's Army. Who is he? I don't know. Time out. Pete. Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello. You were there just in time and you blocked Christopher. You can't get a pink section. You've already got one, but I think Christopher knew it as well. OK, at the end of that round, we see still in third position with ten illuminated is Reynolds. In second with seven is Pete, but leading by just one with six sections to go, half his pie is Chris. Well done. OK, now we come on to our control round, and things are still quite close, and this is where things can really hot up. The pace can increase, because I start by asking you a control question, fingers on buzzers. Whoever answers that correctly then has control of the game and the chance to choose whatever categories they need to fill their pie in sequence. So speed on the buzzer is as, in, as important as trivia knowledge. The categories here are geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, and sport and leisure. Here we go. First control question. If you subtract seven from a baker's dozen, what number do you get? Pete. Six. Is correct, yes. Category, please. Uh, history. History. Soon after the First World War, an epidemic of which disease killed some 15 million people? Time out. Anyone else? Please buzz in. Ranald. Smallpox. No. Christopher. Cholera. It wasn't, no. All good guesses. Influenza is the answer. Control question. In the magpie rhyme, if five is for silver, what is six for? Christopher. Gold. Is correct. Category, please. Um, entertainment. Entertainment. The pink. The 1939 play, The Philadelphia Story, about the heiress Tracy Lord and her ex-husband C.K. Dexter Haven, was later adapted to become which hit musical starring High Grace Society. Kelly and Bing Crosby? High Society. Is correct, of course. Yes, another category, please. Uh, entertainment again. Entertainment again for Pink. With whom did Spencer Tracy co-star in many romantic films, including Adam's Rib? Catherine Hepburn. Is correct. Another category. Uh, geography. Geography. Blue to complete that blue slice. In which European country is the city and port of Santander? Italy. Time out. Anyone else? Ranald. 
Spain. Is correct. You have control. Please choose a category. Sport and leisure. Sport and leisure. Which country did Lennox Lewis represent at the 88 Olympic Games? Canada. Is correct. Another category. Uh, science and nature. The green. Which famous diamond housed in the Washington Smithsonian Institute is alleged to carry a curse? The Cullinan. No. Christopher. The Hope. The Hope Diamond. Control reverts to you. Category. Um... Geography, okay. Geography, to complete that blue slice. What, sati, what city is the provincial capital of Ontario? Ontario? Yes. No, it's not. No. Ronald. Ottawa. No. The provincial capital of Ontario is Toronto, in fact. Okay, another control question. Before I ask the control question, that's the 60-second warning. If at the end of that 60 seconds, no one has completed all sections of their pie, it's the person with the most sections illuminated who goes on to play for that holiday, and the 60 seconds start now. Born in Russia in 1866, 1886, which crooner is associated with the songs Mammy and Sonny Boy Pete? Al Jolson. Correct. Category, please. Um, sport and leisure. Which John is a snooker player famous for his cabaret impressions of his fellow professionals? John Verga. Correct. Category, please. Uh, geography. Which country contains the Abruzzi National Park in the Apennines? Italy. Correct. Category. Uh, geography again. A car bearing the international plate GBA comes from which of the Channel Islands? Guernsey. No. Incorrect. Ranald. Alderney. Is correct. Category, please. Uh, history. Which son of a Georgia farmer who graduated from Annapolis Naval College in 46 went on to become the 39th president of the USA? Carter. Correct. Category, please. Uh, entertainment. Lovely Rita first appeared on which Beatles album? Yellow Submarine. No, time out. Any more? Pete. Sergeant Pepper. Correct. You have control category. Uh, geography. Geography. What's the largest island belonging to Den... <laughs> I'm up. I'm up very well fought, all of you. We see in third position with eight sections to illuminate is Ranald. In second place, but only just with five to go is Pete. But the person who goes on to play for the holiday is Chris. Well done, Christopher. <laughs> Well done. Commiserations to Ranald and Pete. Chris had a really good sort of uh, late burst there. Excellent stuff. You don't go away empty-handed. You both get a Family Channel t-shirt and the TV edition of the fabulously compulsive Trivial Pursuit board game. You've been great contestants. Ladies and gentlemen, Ranald and Pete. <laughs> but now, Christopher, would you please join me at the centre of the board to play the ultimate trivia challenge? <laughs> Well done for getting this far, Christopher. Uh, you've also got the T-shirt and the board game. We're also going to give you a Pathé Newsreel video commemorating the year of your birth. But this is the holiday you're about to play for. If you win tonight, your destination is Mallorca. Marvel at the panoramic views over this island. Swim in the sparkling blue seas. Visit the wondrous caves of Drac. There are a whole host of attractions to delight you, including the beautiful bays, the many restaurants, and the wonderful, spectacular seafood. So, good luck on this wonderful, trivial pursuit holiday. So, Christopher, fancy a bit of sun and sand. Definitely. Yes, I think that will be on the menu, wouldn't it? And I really hope you're going to get there. In order to get there, you are going to have 60 seconds in which to illuminate all six sections of your pie by answering six questions correctly. If you answer incorrectly or pass, we'll simply go on to the next category. Here we go. The very best of luck to you, Christopher. Your 60 seconds start now. Which major river of North America rises near Lake Itasca in North Minnesota? Mississippi. Correct. What's the most frequently used letter in the English language? A. Correct. In what European mountain range would you find the Matterhorn? Alps. Correct. Who was assassinated by a Hindu fanatic at New Delhi on the 30th of January, 1948? Gandhi. Correct. The Field Fair is the largest member of which bird family? Don't know. Thrush. Which Geoffrey Archer novel tells of political rivals, each striving to become Prime Minister? First among equals. Correct. Who was the President of Argentina at the outbreak of the Falklands War? Gautieri. Correct, yes, you've done it. Well done. Well done. Excellent. Congratulations, Chris. Excellent. With 28 seconds to go, that's really, really quick. Well done to you. Congratulations. Bon voyage. Thanks to you. Thanks to all our contestants. Thanks to you, the studio audience. And especially thanks to you at home for watching. If you'd like to be a contestant on Trivial Pursuit, this is the address to write to. Trivial Pursuit. Action Time Limited. P.O. Box 121. Manchester. M60. 1EX. Please do join us again soon for another exciting game of Trivial Pursuit. Bye-bye. <laughs>
ready, steady,